Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled HOA banned my emotional support dog, I sued them and won. Never mess with a veteran. Now, I might look like an old man that can be messed with, but as a United States Marine veteran, I would like to tell anybody that thinks that can mess with me to think again. To understand the story, you should know that from my time in the services and other personal matters, my doctor recommended that I get an emotional support animal. I got a cute little dog that helps a lot with the depression and anxiety. After a heart attack and stroke, I'm not the most mobile person in the world, but having my little buddy helps me get out of the house and not just being stuck inside. Basically, he is the best thing that has ever happened to me and at the time of the story I have had him for about 7 years. Now, I knew that I was living in an HOA, but never really bothered looking that much into the rules. As far as I knew, the whole thing was about keeping your property neat and stuff like that, which mine was. Apparently though, there was a rule about no pets that was not actually being enforced. It was pretty serious too, stating that there could be no dogs, cats, birds, fish, reptiles, rodents, rodents, turtles, etc. I have no idea who wrote this thing and what their issue against our fellow creatures was. Then a new head of the HOA stepped up and decided he was going to start enforcing the rules against no pets even though plenty lived in the neighborhood already. Luckily, most indoor pets like fish, lizards could not really be monitored because, well, they just wouldn't let the HOA go into their home. Dogs though got the biggest crackdown because it was obvious who had a dog and all of us were sent letters home saying we either needed to get rid of the animal or relocate. There was no way in hell I was going to move out of my home because of this rule. There was also no way I was going to get rid of my dog just because the head of the HOA decided this horrible rule was a good idea. Now, I don't know about the other people that had dogs in the neighborhood, but I felt like I should have been allowed to keep my dog. Remember, he is an emotional support dog and my doctor was the one telling me that I needed him. He was basically a prescription from my doctor, so they could not just tell me to get rid of him. For the point of this, I really am going to put aside that the whole thought of telling people to get rid of their companions is just the worst thing ever and focus on what happened first between me and them. I just flat out refused to do anything about it and got letters saying that I was getting daily fines until I got rid of the dog or moved away. These fines were already insane by the way, like $300 a day for breaking the stupid rule. I realized that this was not going away and decided I was just going to sue them for trying to make me get rid of the dog. I was not going in alone though, no sir. I let other veterans and military families know about this and let them know what I was going through and invited them to come and show their support. If anyone could come close to the way I was feeling that made me get the dog, it would be that group of people. On the day of the trial, I went in and found that I had a huge amount of not only fellow military supporting me, but even some of my neighbors that knew me and my connection to the dog. The trial was pretty boring with the HOA explaining their rules and me seeing the new head of the HOA for the first time. His lawyer went on and on and it did not matter if the rules were never enforced before, it was never challenged or overturned. He also tried to tell me that my dog was not able to be an emotional support dog which was just flat out wrong. I showed them a letter from my doctor that I asked him to write verifying that living without the dog would cause an adverse effect on my mental health. Basically, since the case was obviously really clear cut, I won without a problem and got to keep my dog. The story does not end here though like you might think. The people that came and supported me still did not like what the HOA head was doing and they called for his head basically. They badmouthed him to the media and he was labeled as discriminating against veterans and not caring about the service members. Probably a little extreme but media tends to crack things up to 10 these days. He basically got so much crap from everyone that he willingly stepped down and someone new was appointed to lead the HOA. The first thing that they did was to get rid of the rule about having pets because they knew it was just going to get them in a lot of trouble. 
maybe people have dogs for emotional support or even services, others could make an argument that forcing someone to separate from an animal that they made an attachment with is just plain cruel and could sue the HOA for suffering. I did not want to get any money or anything out of them, I just wanted them to leave me alone about my little buddy. I don't recall if the fines were officially taken away by the judge, since my memory is not what it used to be. Either way, I never paid them and nobody ever asked me about them again. For a while at the park, me and my dog were being treated almost like celebrities with everyone knowing what went down and that I was the one that basically helped the rule get taken away. Like I said in the beginning though, it really was not about getting the rule overturned for me, it was just about me keeping the dog that I really need in order to survive day to day. Even as I type this out on the computer now, my little buddy is sitting in my lap and just relaxing. It might not seem like he's doing much to most people, but without him I probably would not be able to function day to day. He is the thing that helps me get up in the morning and keep myself moving throughout the day. I might look like an old man walking around with a tiny little dog, but that does not mean you can get away with pushing me around. One thing about the marines is that we carry it with us for the rest of our lives, so even if I have not served in almost 50 years, it does not mean that you can push me around. Veterans are just as tough as the young ones fighting today, and anyone trying to mess with me is going to feel that wrath. And yeah, ripe stars, as obvious veterans of reddit, we all know that you never mess with a veteran. And even more so, you don't mess with people's support dogs. That is just plain stupid on the part of the HOA. Either way, if you enjoy the stories about crazy HOAs, then I would really appreciate it if you could post some star emojis in the comments and if you want to go the extra mile, I would also appreciate a like on the video. Thank you so much in advance, your support is very much appreciated. And the next one is a story from r slash am I the a-hole and it is titled Am I the a-hole for getting my neighbors fined by our HOA after they called my one problem a me problem. They are my direct next door neighbors, many elderly slash older couples live here but there has been a rise in younger families with children, my family being one to purchase about a year ago, myself and my husband and our two young children. Our neighborhood has an HOA and generally they leave you alone if you don't cause any problems. Keep your lawn clean, avoid parking on the street for extended periods of time, don't paint your house a disapproved color, have any work on your house approved beforehand and you're golden. I've heard some horror stories about HOAs but ours is relatively lenient. We have a good relationship with our neighbors up until now. Our neighbor's house was robbed when they were on vacation about a month ago. So they have installed security cameras, a security system, security lights etc. The problem is that one of their security lights shines into my son's bedroom at night, it is on constantly but turns extra bright if it senses movement. The thing is, this light is the most sensitive light ever made, I swear just a little bug or some wind will set it off. It is bright as hell and wakes up my son, he is 4.5 years old even with his shutters shut because it is so bright. So after a week of this I went to my neighbors and spoke to them. The husband said to me word for word, I'm sorry but that sounds like a you problem. I kept my composure and asked him if he had properly filed with the HOA before installing these new additions, he said it was not an addition, just some lights so he did not need their approval. I asked him to please adjust the light so that it pointed away from my son's window and he said no and asked me to leave. Mad as hell I talked to my husband about it when we got home, he couldn't believe our up until now very nice neighbors would be that inconsiderate. So we contacted the HOA. The very next day I recognized the head of the HOA's car outside their house. I eavesdropped from our balcony and she is ripping them a new one. Apparently they had new windows and front doors installed and did not have it approved through the HOA beforehand. They also built an addition into their backyard and that was not approved either. So they will be receiving several heavy fines from the HOA in addition to being required to adjust their security lights as to prevent them from disturbing neighbors. His wife 
wife came over yesterday and laid into me about the fines we imposed on them and said we could have handled this without getting the HOA involved. I told her I tried to handle the security light issue with her husband but he told me it was a me problem. She insisted she knew nothing about that, I could hear them very loudly fighting shortly after. Apparently I ruined an important anniversary between them, I'm sorry but that sounds like a you problem right? Our other neighbors heard about it and today it is 50-50 me versus neighbor being the a-hole. So am I the a-hole? And ripe stars I would say OP is definitely not the a-hole here because that sounds like a situation where having an HOA could definitely be useful. However, I would like to hear your opinion about this. Do you think that OP is the a-hole or not? Let us know in the comments. A user in the comments said, not the a-hole, you tried talking to him and being reasonable and turned your problem into a bigger problem for him when he basically told you off. Sucks to be him. Another user said, you had no way of knowing all the other stuff they did without the HOA approval, their actions were negatively affecting your child and they decided to be a-holes about it when you tried to bring it up. You did not ruin their anniversary, their marriage did. The next one is titled, steal from me once, fine, steal from me twice or more, get obliterated. In a prior post in a different subreddit I asked if I was the bad guy for wanting to call the police on my nephews for stealing from me. And the overwhelming support I got made me realize that standing my ground was the best thing for me to do. About midway last week when I came home from work I noticed my shed door was open and the padlock that I used to keep it shut was broken. And I had a lot of bags full of soda cans in there. I and my friends tend to drink a lot of soda so I've built up a lot of cans over the course of about a year. I was going to cash these cans in at the bottle drop soon because I like big payouts. It is 10 cents a can where I live after all but there was more than just my bags of cans missing from the shed too. They took my gardening shears, a steel rack, two shovels, one of them being one of those folding camping ones, a full 2 gallon gas can, a cheap power drill I got for like $5 used, an electric hatch trimmer and a small electric chainsaw that was also used and a machete. They did not touch the lawnmower, weed whacker, extension cords or the old radio I had in there. No idea why they took what they did but I guess they figured they could resell them or something. I checked my camera footage and there was my three nephews, ages 16, 15, 14, breaking into my shed with one of their dad's large claw hammers. I recognize the hammer because it is bright yellow and black and their dad has a bunch of them. It only took them a few hits to smash that cheap lock and after they first broke into my shed they took what they could by hand. And then they came back with some shopping carts that I'm guessing they also stole. But it took them a few trips to get all of the cans and they did not bother to even try and close the door when they were done. And by the way guys that is a pretty crappy thing to steal I gotta say. Those are some environmental friendly thieves, at least if they turn the cans in at the supermarket. Anyway, my sister and brother-in-law first denied their kids stole anything from me, so I went to their house and showed them the security footage from my cameras. I had not told them that I'd had cameras installed and the reason I had the cameras put in was because of prior thefts by my nephews. It started with food and snacks and then moved on to DVDs and video games and then pretty much anything they could smuggle out after that. And any time I made them return stuff they had stolen from me I was treated like the bad guy and then got the fakest apologies I've ever heard. And they never got in much trouble from their parents either. The final straw happened last year when my nephews broke into my house and stole three six packs of my favorite blood orange beer from my fridge. They used my hidden spare key to get in and also took a huge dump in one of my bathrooms and not only did not flush but also peed all over the floor. And I'm pretty sure it was intentional. The beer they stole was hidden in one of their bedrooms when I confronted my sister and brother-in-law about my nephew stealing it and I was basically given an equivalent to boys will be boys when I wanted them punished. So I had the cameras put in and told no one which was a smart move. When my sister and brother-in-law saw the camera footage of my nephew stealing from me they seemed furious. But they were actually madder that their boys skipped school to steal from me. They had spent all day making repeated trips to the bottle drop and cashing the cans by machine. 
The bottle drop also pays by machine, so they just kept bringing the cans in till they cashed them all. And then they bought video games and junk food with the money. Said money actually amounted to nearly $200 and with that and the destroyed padlock, I told my sister and brother-in-law that they now owed me $200. My sister and brother-in-law went from being angry at their kids to making excuses for them and then being angry at me for wanting that money back when I know they have three kids and a mortgage. I said it was either that or I go to the police and press charges. They told me to get out and I said they have two days to decide how to pay me back before I go to the cops. I got back everything else my nephew stole, machete and gas can included. Though they had already used the gas for something, but over the next couple of days my sister and brother-in-law were blowing up my phone with a ton of messages. Both verbal and text, at first they were calling me heartless because it was right after the holidays and they have three kids and a mortgage. Then they started gaslighting me, then even threatening me and all of this would go in a repeating cycle. My nephews chimed in from another cell phone and were sending me lots of messages of their own, which were more fake apologies and gaslighting. My eldest nephew even sent me a picture of himself holding a soda can and giving me the middle finger. I guess they were not taking my threats of going to the police seriously because family. When I last spoke with my sister and brother-in-law, they refused to negotiate any sort of method of repayment for what my nephews did, even when I suggested they just sell the video games that were purchased with the money from the cans. Then they had the audacity to say I had actually tempted my nephews by having the cans in my shed to begin with. Oh yes, I'm the devil snake that tempted my nephews with a shed full of cans that just screamed money money money. So that was it. I went to the police station that morning and filed the report, gave them a copy of the video footage of my nephew stealing from my shed and I gave them the broken lock they smashed. I showed them all of the text which was screenshotted and also given as evidence. Hell, I even gave them a copy of the photo my eldest nephew sent me of him flipping me off. I did tell police that I found it worrisome that my nephews had taken the machete. But they classified it as a tool, especially since they took a lot of other actual tools, so fair enough on that I suppose. But my nephews were indeed arrested on Saturday, police came to their house and my sister and brother-in-law were forced to let them in because they had a warrant. Apparently all three of my nephews went from being cocky little pieces of work to crying little babies when they were being put in handcuffs. I know this because a neighbor I'm acquainted with that sort of friends with my sister was there to see it. And shortly after the arrest my sister and brother-in-law were blowing up my phone again. They were not able to get their kids out of jail till Monday morning and now the boys are being charged with larceny, willful destruction of property and vandalism and harassment. The police took this whole case pretty seriously as there has been complaints about my nephews for some time. But nothing was proven until now. The past few months bags of cans have actually been going missing all over the area. Don't know if it was my nephews or not but they are likely suspects. And with word spreading of their arrest let's hope other neighbors with security cameras come forward with more footage. My sister and brother-in-law showed up at my house too. I refused to open the door and told them that this all happened because they are enablers who refused to hold their kids accountable for their actions. That made them just scream and pound on my door more till I threatened to call police on them too. And since I have done it already, they know I mean it now. So they left without any more trouble, but they went back to blowing up my phone. I did not block my sister or brother-in-law, instead I decided to just save all of the messages they sent me because I have made the decision to take them to small claims court over this. I don't really need or want the money and have already replaced the destroyed padlock with a much better one, however the kids are not the only ones who need to be taught a lesson. In the end I hope I put them in enough of a hole that they learn not to screw with me ever again. I also have the full support of my family on this, my parents, aunts, uncles, cousins etc. They are all supporting me in this because my nephews have stolen from them too. And after banning my nephews from my house, some of them did the same. I am going to push for my nephews to get community service and the reason why it is not just because it's a good idea but also because I know that they will hate that the most. Whenever they are made to do any kind of work they don't want to do, they just stand around griping and act like the whole world is against them. So hardly anything ever gets done. Perhaps a few hundred hours of unpaid work will teach them some manners, they've been spoiled far too much.
And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel but also turn on the bell notifications which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.